Hi, so whether you're producing in Cubase, recording, mixing or mastering, what you end up doing a lot is starting playback, stopping playback, going back to where you want to start playback again, etc. Now there have always been some really nice features in Cubase that can really help improve your workflow for these actions. And Cubase 13 even provides some nice enhancements for this as well. So let's go. Okay, so before we dive into the Cubase 13 specifics for transport control, let's see what the previous versions of Cubase already provided. And as example, I'm using a Cubase project for a production that I'm currently still working on for an upcoming video for this channel. So subscribe if you want to see that. Now the most obvious way to start playback in Cubase is of course by pushing the start button on the transport bar here at the bottom, which starts playback of the project and we can stop by pushing the stop button. Now you already saw some common shortcuts for this. Start is the enter button on your numeric keyboard and stop is the zero button on your numeric keyboard. And that works enter and zero equally well. Another way to start and stop playback is by pushing the space bar. It starts and stops with the same button on your PC keyboard. Now one of the nice workflow features that I use a lot when starting and stopping playback is that you can return to the position that you started your playback from by pushing the stop button a second time. Like this, I press play, leave it go for a bit, push stop, push stop again, and you see that it moves back to where I started my playback from. That's nice, for example, when you want to listen to that section again, or when you're recording and want to scroll back to the position where you started recording. Now, another nice shortcut button for moving to a certain position in your project is the period key on your numeric keyboard, because if you push that, like I'm doing now, you see that the project cursor returns back to the very beginning of the project. Some other nice shortcut buttons for moving around on the timeline are the numeric keypad 1 and 2 buttons. Because 1 moves to the left locator and 2 moves to the right locator, like this. Just push 1. If I push 2, you can see that the cursor moves to the right locator. Now you can, of course, move those locators manually, like this, with your mouse. But there are also easier ways to set them. For example, if you want your locator surrounding this chorus, you select the chorus then press the P button on your keyboard and the locators are set around the selected part. Another way to select the locators to a position you want is by clicking in the project ruler here while holding the control button on your keyboard. That's a way to set the left locator. And if you hold the Alt button at the same time, then you're setting the right locator. Or if you, for example, want to set the locators to your current cursor position, you can press the control button and the one button on your numeric keypad and the left locator is set to your cursor position. And the same thing goes for pushing control and two, the right locator is moved to the cursor position. Now other ways to start playback from a certain position in your project is by just moving there with your cursor. For example, you can click in the project window ruling on top here, then your cursor will move there and you can then start playback from that position. Now I find this myself always a bit tricky to click exactly in that ruler here on top of the project window because it's not that big. And if you are between locators and you click a bit too high, you actually enable your cycle and don't move your cursor position to where you want to go. So what I typically like to do is in my edit preferences, I like to set transport to locate when clicked in empty space, meaning that I don't exactly have to click on the ruler, but I can click anywhere in the project where there's no event and my cursor will move to that location. Look, now I can just click on the empty spaces here and my project cursor will move there. Just one thing to remember is that it will not adhere to the grid because currently you see that I have grid set to bar here. If I click in the ruler, it will always put my cursor exactly on bar boundaries. But that's not the case if you use this feature to click in open space because then it will just put your project cursor exactly where you click and will not lock it to the grid as you've set over here. Now, if you already got some value from this video, please give it a big like for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell icon if you want to get notified when I publish another video. For more support, you can use the super thanks button below, which is kind of a virtual tip jar. Or if you're planning on buying anything at one of these stores, if you do so after clicking one of the affiliate links in the description, I will get a small commission without any extra cost to you. And it really makes a difference, so I really appreciate it if you do that. But let's see what Cubase 13 offers additionally in the department of starting and stopping playback, which you do so many times when working on a project. Because in the transport menu over here, Cubase 13 allows you to set the start mode for when you start playback. And currently it's set to start from project cursor position, which is basically how it always worked in Cubase. 
but you can also set it to start from cycle start, which it says over here. And if you then enable your cycle, and when you push play, you can see that Cubase starts playing at the beginning of the cycle and not at the project cursor position. Now the cycle does need to be enabled because if you don't have the cycle enabled, then playback just starts at the cursor position like before. Now another option is to start from selection start, which means that if anything is selected in your project window, playback will start at the beginning of the selected event. For example, if I select this event in the base folder track, and if I push play, you can see that playback starts at the beginning of the selected event, which every event I select. Now the next option for start mode is that you set it to start from selection or cycle start. So if anything is selected, it will again start playback from the selected event, or maybe this event. Or if you enable the cycle, playback will start from the cycle start. If you have both a selected event and an enabled cycle, playback will start from the cycle start. Now I have to say that although this is great functionality, it is still a bit glitchy at this time. I'm running Cubase 13.0.20 at the moment. And sometimes, especially in these combination modes, in my experience, it doesn't work 100% reliably yet. But I'm sure Steinberg will get rid of those bugs in the upcoming releases. Now another feature in the transport menu, which we also should not forget. Again, start mode, if we put it back to start from project cursor position. And if we then set that return to start position on stop, you also get the very nice feature that if you start playback, and if you then stop playback, the cursor will always return to the position where you started playback from. So where you before had to push the stop button twice, it now does this automatically, which is very convenient for repeatedly recording from the same location, for example. Now maybe at this point you're thinking, well, I don't want to always have the same start mode selected. I want to change it depending on what I do. And you can always, of course, set up key commands in Cubase to quickly trigger those start modes without having to go through the menu, depending on what you're doing at the moment. Now, if you have any more nice tips related to this functionality that really improve your workflow, let us know in the comments so that we can all benefit from this. Now, another way to control playback in Cubase is, of course, from a hardware controller. Some of you may have noticed this new one on my desk already, but more about that in an upcoming video as well. But I have already made a video on how to control Cubase from a standard Elgato Stream Deck, a pretty inexpensive device which can be used for a lot more than controlling Cubase even. And if you want to know how to do that, I'll link the video up here. Check it out, enjoy, and see you soon.